Okay, so we are in the chapter on diagonalization, and we're busy with eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay, so we did one example. Now we're going to do, in that example, the eigenvalues were distinct. So the eigenvalues that we see were minus 1 and 3. They're different. It's possible that a matrix may have repeated eigenvalues, as we see in the following example. So remember, <coughs> it's a 3 by 3 matrix, so it must have three eigenvalues, but actually it can have two of them repeated. Okay. So let's do that. Um, okay, so you use you got to solve the characteristic. Well, you got to find you you've got to find the characteristic polynomial, right? So you go b minus lambda i. And that's going to give you this matrix like this. So you have b, and then on the diagonal you have minus lambdas. <coughs> you want to find the determinant, so you could expand along the first col first row. So you get 1 minus lambda, and then the determinant of what remains, the minor that remains. Okay. Then I like doing this by Gauss reduction, so I'm gonna do I'm gonna do that. So you can change this by going, you could go uh, you could change row two into row two plus no, let me rather do, you know, let me do let me change column two. No, yes, yes. Let me change row 2 into row 2 plus row 1. Okay, so then I'm going to get 1 minus lambda, 3 minus lambda, 2, and then this row 2 will become 5 minus lambda, 5 minus lambda. Okay, and I can factorize out the 5 minus lambda from the bottom row, and I have 3 minus lambda 2, 1, 1 left. Now I can, I can go column 1 can become column 1 minus column 2, because then it will become an upper triangular matrix. So we're going to get 3 minus lambda, oh no, sorry, we're going to have 3 minus lambda minus 2, so you're going to have 1 minus lambda, 2, and you're going to have 1 minus 1, which is 0, and that's the one there. Okay, and so now it's just, the term of that is now the diagonal, so you have 1 minus lambda, 5 minus lambda, 1 minus lambda, equals 0. So then it's the 1 minus lambda factor, they have it as lambda minus 1, same difference, that is repeated. Okay. You know, I just prefer to put the, to write. I prefer to have the capital polynomial in this form with the minus lambda because it looks more like that, and it's a, it shows makes it more clear to me that the the, the eigen values are one, five, and one. Okay, so lambda one five the one is repeated root of the characteristic polynomial. So and that we said has an algebraic multiplicity of two. So I don't even remember, but we did um, auxiliary something quite similar to this, we did an auxiliary polynomial, and there we had multiplicity, right? Now, here we have multipli and it was the same situation. We had a repeated root, that's called the multiplicity, the, the mul it was repeated, the number of times it was repeated was called the multiplicity. We have the same thing here, right? But now we actually we're going to call it algebraic multiplicity because there's another concept for eigenvalues and eigenvectors uh, for the characteristic polynomial that, that is called geometric multiplicity. So this is the algebraic multiplicity. Algebraic because it's a multiplicity that is to do with this um, polynomial, and you know, polynomials are part of algebra. Okay, we, so now we're going to calculate eigenvectors. Uh, so it says you should check for yourself that the eigenvectors corresponding to 5, lambda 2 equals 5, are uh, that, are uh, 0, 1, 1. Then, it, okay, then it says the calculation for lambda 1 equals 1 is more interesting. Okay, so how would you check that, the, that how do you check that the eigenvector for lambda 2 equals 5 is 0, 1, 1? Well, you could go through the whole rigmarole of finding it, but it's much easier just to go, well, I take the matrix B, which is 1, 1, 1, 0, 3, 2, 0, 2, 
3, I multiply by the purported eigenvector 0, 1, 1, and I get what I get. 0, 5, 5. Okay, which of course is 5 times the original thing. So yes, that is indeed the eigenvector. Okay. Or you could... So this definitely is the eigenvector. How would you find it if they didn't give it to you? Let's actually do that. You do it... You would solve the characteristic... You would solve the um, eigenvector equation, right? So, to remind you, you you're looking to solve... B, V equals lambda V, right? You're actually looking to solve that for the case of lambda equals 5, okay? But that's the same as if you take this to the other side, equals 0. You can stick an I in there to al allow you to factorize out the vector V, so you get that, okay? Uh, so that's the equation we're going to solve, okay? So what is that? It's... We have, effectively, it's this thing, right? Just that, that, just that as a matrix, not the determinant. So you have 1 minus 5, which is minus 4, then 0, 0. Uh, then we have 1, 3 minus 5, which is minus 2, 2. And then 1, 2, 3 minus 5, which is minus 2, OK? Times V equals 0. OK, so this is what we're going to solve for v. So how can we do this? We could go, we could go, we could do row 3 minus row 2. Okay, we could also do, oh, we could do row 1 divided by minus 4. Okay, let's do that. Then we're gonna get gonna get one zero zero one minus two two zero. So who we have two uh let's not do that actually. Let's do this. let's leave that like that. One two yeah, let's actually do row three plus row two. Hold on a second. Oh, it was nothing. Um, sorry. So we have one minus two, two. Uh, I, want to, I changed my mind. I want to do row three plus row two for reasons. That will become 2, 0, 0. OK. V equals 0. Now we could do row 2 minus row 1 and row 3 minus 2 times row 1. And then that's going to give us 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 2, 2, 0, 0, 0, times V equals 0. And now we could do Row 2 divided by minus 2, and that will give us 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 0. Vector v equals 0. OK. So that means that v would be, well, so the first row is saying that the first component of v is 0, and then the second row is saying that the second component is the same as the third component, so yeah, 0, 1, 1. Yes, which is indeed what we expected to get. OK. Now, the calculation for lambda 1 equals 1, so the other eigenvalues are 1 and 1, is more interesting. So this one is supposedly going to give us something different. OK, so we have b, we minus the lambda, the lambdas, which is 1, from the, from the diagonal in the normal, normal way. Let me again write this out in the way I prefer it. So you get 0, 1, 1, 0, 2, 2, 0, 2, 2, v equals 0. Uh, now we could do row 2, oh, you could do row 3 minus row 2. 
okay? And then we could swap some rows um, so that you will end up with 1, 2, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, V equals 0. Okay. So what does this mean? This means that there are two rows of zeros. So there's two free variables. So there's a free variable alpha, a free variable beta that corresponds to, well, the pivot is here in this first, row, first column, so the free variables correspond to the to um, to the second and third rows. So we have, you know, there we go, free variable for the alpha, free variable for the beta in the second row, free variable for the alpha in the third row, okay? And then this two and two here, they say that the first component is minus two times the third compo second component, minus two times the first compo third component, and that's what that's saying, okay? All right, so, Here the eigenvalue was repeated twice. So two rows, here the eigenvalue was repeated twice. Two rows of the augmented matrix reduced to zero and two linearly independent eigenvectors can be found. So the two linearly independent eigenvectors are, well, there's many possibilities, but minus two, zero, one, and minus two, one, zero, or an example. So if you give these two eigenvectors, then that's really, that, that gives you, that says that you say that, well, the, the eigenvectors in general are, linear combinations of those two vectors. Just like how in the previous case where we had just one, just uh, just one row of zeros, we end up with just this one eigenvector, or really we're saying that the eigenvectors are all the scalar multiples of that. Now here it's just two eigenvectors, two linearly independent eigenvectors, so the eigenvectors for this eigenvalue are linear combinations of alpha and beta. Okay. Now this, you have, oh, now, okay, cool, that's, I'm going to leave it there, uh, and carry on in the next video, okay.